One way is to look for the root of the mind until it disappears. There's this funny thing that happens that even though your mind is always active and always projecting all these things that aren't really there and generate this sense of self that is the false self, it's not the real self. The real self is overwhelming natural bliss. The false self is the self that you most likely know on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have to interrupt that to be able to know the sun of the true self, so to speak, the light of the true self. When we actually go and intently look for the very root, the very core of our minds, it's like it starts to disappear. The very activity of looking for it makes the looker, makes the thinker disappear. And you'll have interruptions of the false self. And what shines forth is this natural overwhelming bliss. The more you practice this, the more you'll dissolve into it. Or rather, the more it will shine forth and reveal itself. So again, more on that during the New York City event. Another way is to realize how nothing is of interest to you and remain utterly unimpressed. This doesn't mean that you have to do this for life, although you could, some people do, because they just want the overwhelming bliss and nothing else, and then it's a natural result. But if you just want to interrupt the false self for certain moments per day and get used to overwhelming natural bliss, all you need to do is put yourself in a state where just nothing is of interest to you. Just imagine that nothing matters to you, nothing is of interest, and remain utterly unimpressed by the appearances, the thoughts, the emotions, the perspectives, the sensations that arise, the people, the opportunities even. Just let them come and let them go. Let them present themselves and let them go. Remain utterly undisturbed and unimpressed. And what happens is that this pervasive changelessness starts to shine through and reveal itself to be your true self. The next way to realize the real self the next little hack is to find the innermost sense of me in each state of experience. So no matter what the entire equation of your present experience is, no matter what's on your canvas of life at this moment, it doesn't matter. There's always an innermost sense of me that outshines, or at least has the capacity to outshine and overwhelm any false fabrication or any temporary fabrication of a you. So, just take the experience as it is, let your current canvas, your current painting, your current dreamscape be exactly as it is. Don't change anything. Just release it, let it be. And recognize or go to find that innermost sense of me in that experiential equation. And then when you think you get there, let even that be and go even deeper. What's the real me inside of this experiential state or equation? And you keep doing that and it becomes more and more and more blissful and you start to really feel and know your true changeless self more and more. Fourth path that we'll discuss, uh, discuss during the New York City event is understand that everything in your current experience is a dream without substance. When you walk around your hometown or um, just go about your everyday life or on your work floor or just in your house when you're, when you're by yourself, Try to see everything, cultivate the seeing that everything is a dream that lacks any and all substance. Pretend or imagine that there's no substratum, there is no foundation to this dream. Imagine that it has no beingness. It's a little tricky if you're not used to this type of contemplation, but you can do it. With practice you can do it, and I'll explain more about what this means and how you can bring this more into your experiential reality. But what happens is that literally the the sense of substance or rigidity or foundation or solidity of this dream gets sucked out of the equation. It's like sucking poison from a wound. And suddenly this dream really appears like a dream, like a lucid, empty dream. And it's a real experiential shift that allows for more of the light of the self, that change the self to shine forth. It's a really wonderful experience when you pass that threshold of seeing that the dream is not really that real and dense. And the last method to interrupt the false self and allow the real self to shine forth is to reflect this world like a mirror, ignoring any sense of doership, needs, or wants. So pretend like you are a mirror. A mirror can't have an opinion about anything. It can't have a bias. It doesn't do anything. It purely reflects what is, without any bias, without any preference. By simply putting yourself in this state for a few minutes every day, you will find that it interrupts the false self and this real sense of self starts to shine through as if you opened the back door of your mind 
to the real self, to the light of God. Simply by reflecting this world, remaining, in this, remaining yourself as the state of the mirror and not indulging in appearances, but just letting everything come and go, not assuming any sense of doership, ignoring any needs, just reflecting, just being with what is, just reflecting. And in that emptiness of not wanting anything from anything, suddenly this brightness, this light, this clarity, this lucidity, this bliss, this natural bliss starts to pour into your experience.